Hello everyone, my name is Jere Lehtinen and I'm from Aalto University. Today's short video is a teaching note in which I will demonstrate how to solve design structure matrix and optimize information flows. In solving the design structure matrix, we rely on sequencing algorithm to optimize the information flows bit between tasks. The sequencing algorithm begins by identifying candidates for the earliest and latest tasks. In an ideal situation, the first task would require no information from other tasks, making it a suitable candidate to start the project. Respectively, the last task would not produce any information to other tasks, making it suitable task to finish off the project. In this imaginary project, we can see that task B requires no information from other tasks. So let's move it up as the first task. Remember always to move the respective column so that the diagonal follows correctly. We can also see that task G produces no information to other tasks, so let's move it to the end. Also, remember always to move the respective row as well so that the diagonal follows correctly. All right, now we need to sort out the rest of the tasks to optimize the information flows. In general, the idea is to move the columns and respective rows so that the cross marks will be below the diagonal or as close to the diagonal as possible. The logic is that inputs are easier to capture than outputs. When we achieve a situation where the cross marks are below the diagonal, it means that all the tasks are sequenced. And as you remember, sequenced tasks need only information from the previous tasks having no feedback loops from successors, making the project more straightforward to execute. So, how do we achieve this? Well, first we try to identify any information feedback loops between tasks. Then we move the, these tasks that cause information feedback loops as upfront as possible in the matrix to eliminate or minimize information feedback loops. We repeat this until all tasks and loops are sequenced if possible. So in practice, this is kind of an iteration exercise. Okay, let's do this together. First, we can identify that task C requires information from task B and provides information for task A. In turn, task A is dependent on the information from task C, but task A doesn't produce information to task C. So we should move task C up before task A. Next, we can see that task L produces information to tasks D, F and J. So we should move it before them to move the cross marks closer to diagonal and below it. And to minimize information feedback loops. All right, now we can identify that task K provides information to tasks L, E, H and J. Let's move task K up before these tasks. As you can now see, the cross marks are already closer to diagonal and many of them are below it. Okay, let's move forward. Next, we identify that task J provides information to tasks L and I. So let's move it up before tasks L and I. Next, we see that task I offers input for tasks L, F and H. Let's move it up before them. All right. Now, task F provides input for task I, D and E. Let's move it before them. As you can see, we are quite close to getting all cross marks below diagonal, but there are still some minor problems. As it turns out, we need to move task L again. This is because it produces information for tasks J and F, and task L is currently scheduled after these tasks. So, let's move task L before tasks J and F. Okay, the matrix seems to be almost completed. Let's inspect the matrix for a minute. It seems that task I is still somewhat problematic, but we cannot improve the situation. The reason is that task I is dependent on tasks J and F, but produces information to tasks L and F. Also, task L is dependent on tasks J and I and offers input for tasks J and F. So, we have a bit of an impasse here formed by four tasks that are interdependent. Okay, let's observe the rest of the cross marks below the diagonal. Sorry, close to diagonal. 
We can see that tasks L and J are coupled, and so are tasks F and I, so they should be fine. However, task H provides information to task E, while task E is dependent on task H. So let's move task H before task E. All right, let's check the matrix one more time. We can identify that task D is dependent on task E, while task E provides information to task D, indicating that we could move E up before D. However, task E was dependent on task H. So we have another impasse formed by these three tasks, D, E, and H, and we cannot improve the situation anymore. All right. So the design structure matrix is now complete. Let's observe it one last time. First, we can identify that tasks B and C are sequenced and ideal for project work. That's good. Second, we can observe that tasks A and K are parallel and they can be executed concurrently after tasks B and C. Third, we can see that tasks L, J, F and I and tasks E, D and H are coupled. Coupled tasks should be completed in collaboration to minimize iteration and information feedback loops. We can observe that the coupled task in the middle formed by tasks L, J, F and I is a challenging iteration process. Can we do something about it? The potential solution lies in tiering. Tiering means that we remove a feedback loop from the matrix. This is done by identifying the assumptions that need to be made about the information feedback loop. So, to start the iteration process, we know the set of assumptions about the information needed by task L from task I. In practice, we make a very good initial approximation based on these set of assumptions. Nevertheless, this means that after we have progressed up to task I and completed it, we need to recheck with tasks L, J, and F that everything is in order. It might mean that our initial guess was not good enough and that we need to redo tasks L, J, F, and I all over again. Tiering is a very context-specific activity and it should be done cautiously because it can cause extra iterations and delays. In situations where we have a good understanding about the assumptions concerning the information feedback loop, it might be a good idea to rely on tiering to speed up things. Or in situations where the task is not very sensitive regarding the information feedback, it can be useful to consider tiering. All right, that concludes our teaching note. Cheers.